Hard to believe, but it's getting close to 50 years since Saturday Night Live first aired on NBC. Wait, wait, that can't be right. 1975, 76, I need a calculator. Back then, there were no personal computers, no iPads, no mobile phones. In fact, the big high-tech personal item was the pocket calculator, which could run you $50 or $60 back in the mid-70s. And you couldn't even use it to tweet about that conehead sketch you just saw. So how did a network show so rife with controversy remain on for so long? Well, for one thing, not a lot of competition during that time slot. And despite the edgy nature of the program, those most likely to complain were already asleep. NBC's Saturday Night was actually the original name, as there was another variety show that premiered a month earlier called Saturday Night Live that was hosted by the incredibly zany Howard Cosell. This aired on ABC and only lasted 18 episodes. The NBC show has been far more enduring, with over 160 cast members appearing as regulars on its stage. With that much water under the bridge and that many people to walk through the doors, it's inevitable that some would have passed on in the interim. Not that many people were aware that Gilbert Gottfried was once a regular cast member on Saturday Night Live. He joined the show in the 1980-81 season. His timing could not have been worse. Although nowadays we come to expect big turnovers in the cast every season, or seemingly every episode, at that time personnel changes were unusual and not well received. All of the original Not Ready for Primetime players had left, as well as producer Lauren Michaels. Gilbert described his one season on the show in less than glowing terms, as he says fans regarded those replacements as sacrificial lambs. The show actually came very close to being canceled for good during that season. Fortunately, a new cast member was added later in the year named Eddie Murphy. Gilbert was also a member of the resident cast of Zanies on Alan Thicke's infamous talk show, Thicke of the Night, in 1983. Though both he and Thicke found it to be an unpleasant, embarrassing experience, they remained friends afterwards. Fortunately for Gilbert, he endured the next 41 years doing stand-up, appearing in movies and TV, and despite having what some described as the most annoying voice in showbiz, was a highly sought-after voice actor. Yeah, Affleck paid us cash in just one day to help with our car payments and mortgage. Affleck! Perfect timing! After 11 years of voicing the Affleck duck, Gilbert was famously fired by the company after a series of tweets where he was joking about a deadly tsunami in Japan. Gilbert didn't realize that the bulk of Affleck's business was done in Japan. On April 12, 2022, after a long illness caused by myotonic dystrophy type 2, Gilbert passed away at age 67. Gilda Susan Radner was named by her mother after the title character played by Rita Hayworth in the film Gilda from 1946. She was born June 28th of that year in Detroit, Michigan. Her family were Jewish immigrants from Russia, Poland, and Lithuania. As a child, she was very close to her father, who unfortunately passed away when she was 14. Gilda grew up with a nanny she always called Dibby, on whom she based her famous character, hard of hearing Emily Latella. As one of the original Not Ready for Primetime players and one of the most beloved members of the cast, Gilda is the only female player from Saturday Night Live to have won an Outstanding Performance Emmy Award for her work on the show. On SNL, she created characters such as Emily Latella, Roseanne Rosanna Dana, Lisa Lubner, and Baba Wawa. She was also briefly married to one of the band members, G.E. Smith, and at one time even dated Martin Short. Gilda left Saturday Night Live after five years and met her second husband, Gene Wilder, while filming the movie Hanky Panky. They were married two years later. 
Wilder was by her side when she announced that she was battling ovarian cancer. After a period where the cancer seemed to be in remission, it did return and spread to her lungs and liver. Gilda lost her battle with the disease in her sleep on a Saturday, May 20th, 1989. In 1990, she won a posthumous Grammy Award for the best spoken word or non-musical recording for the audio of her book, It's Always Something. Gilda recorded this just one month before her death. John Belushi was also one of the original Not Ready for Primetime players. In the 1975 season, his salary was $750 a week for SNL, and his pay for appearing in Animal House three years later was $35,000. He also received half a million dollars for the Blues Brothers in 1980. The maniacal son of Albanian immigrants created legendary characters, including the Samurai, one of the Killer Bees, and Joliet Jake Blues. Although John's reputation as being an off-screen party animal is legendary, his generous side is less well-known. He bought his father a ranch outside San Diego, and he also helped set up some of his Chicago friends with their own businesses, and even financially helped his younger brother Jim Belushi, who followed his older brother's path to both Second City and Saturday Night Live. John was also close friends with Dan Aykroyd, and after Saturday Night Live, the two appeared on the big screen together in Neighbors, 1941, and the Blues Brothers. Belushi died in 1982 of a drug overdose from a speedball injection. Any person's untimely death is a tragedy, but few were as particularly tragic as Phil Hartman's. Hartman was probably the most versatile of all the SNL cast members. Born in Ontario, Canada, Phil was one of eight siblings, and he originally studied graphic design at Cal State University. He began to work as a graphic artist and even designed over 40 album covers for bands such as Crosby, Stills & Nash, America, and Poco. Phil had what was described as an announcer's voice, and once auditioned for that role on The Price is Right, he lost out to Rod Roddy. But in 1975, in addition to doing his graphic arts work, Phil joined the California comedy troupe The Groundlings. While with The Groundlings, he worked with Paul Rubens and John Lovitz. Phil and Paul created the character Pee Wee Herman together, and Phil even had a role on Pee Wee's Playhouse as the pirate Captain Carl. The two later had a falling out, and in 1986, Phil joined Saturday Night Live and remained for eight years, creating characters such as Gene, the anal retentive chef, Frankenstein, Phil Donahue, Ed McMahon, and he used his announcer's voice as the narrator of Deep Thoughts. During his SNL tenure, he played two presidents, Reagan and Clinton, and one future president, Donald Trump, and even a first lady, Barbara Bush. There was no slowdown after SNL, as Phil appeared in movies and also voiced characters on The Simpsons and starred as the obnoxious, egocentric Bill McNeil on news radio. By all indications, that character was the exact opposite of Phil's true-life persona. He had a reputation as one of the nicest, most well-liked actors in Hollywood, with many of his co-stars and directors describing him as a true professional and a joy to work with. The shocking murder-suicide involving his wife, Bree, in 1998 was just before he was to do the voice of Zap Brannigan on Futurama. Billy West got that role, and Phil's voice characters on The Simpsons were retired and never mentioned again.
Jan Hooks had a lot in common with her Saturday Night Live castmate, Phil Hartman. Like Phil, she was a member of the Groundlings, and it was Hartman who helped her overcome a serious case of stage fright while she was on Saturday Night Live. Interestingly, the Decatur, Georgia Nada was turned down for a spot on SNL when she was 28 because they said she was too old. She was hired that next year at 29. Jan was no stranger to sketch comedy, having gotten her TV start doing various characters in The Bill Tish Show in 1980, and also appearing alongside SNL alum Rich Hall on Not Necessarily the News. After five years on Saturday Night Live, Jan Hooks appeared on a number of shows including Designing Women, 30 Rock, Third Rock from the Sun, and like Phil Hartman, a recurring role on The Simpsons as Manjula, the wife of Apu Nahasafina Bedouin. In October of 2014, Hooks died of complications due to throat cancer. The cancer did not respond to surgery and chemotherapy, and doctors said the last medical option was a major procedure that had a poor chance of curing her and would have ended her speaking ability forever. Hooks refused us and used home hospice care for the time she had left. At one time, Christopher Crosby Farley was considered one of the biggest comedy stars in the business, and his fame was growing. Despite his girth, which was listed at nearly 300 pounds in 1997, he was quite athletic, being an avid football and rugby player. David Spade once told an anecdote about how the cast of SNL would hit the bars after rehearsal, and Farley would often approach a young woman claiming that he was an aerobics instructor. When the woman would inevitably scoff at his claim, Chris would do a standing backflip, stick the landing, and continue the conversation. After graduating from Marquette University, Chris was in the cast of Second City Theater, where he was discovered by producer Lorne Michaels of Saturday Night Live. Farley would remain a cast member for five seasons, portraying characters such as Todd O'Connor, one of the superfans, a would-be Chippendale dancer competing against Patrick Swayze, and his most popular character, motivational speaker Matt Foley. Despite his personal demons, Farley was often described as an extremely kind and generous man who often went out of his way to help people in need. He was known for always stopping and not just giving money, but also showing kindness to homeless people he passed on the street. Chris Farley died of accidental opiate cocaine intoxication in December of 1997. Here are some other Saturday Night Live performers we have lost over the years. There's been a lot made of the Saturday Night Live curse, but any show with such a record of longevity with as many different people to have appeared is bound to have those who have left us. The bright spot is these individuals have left us with the richness of their enduring talents. 
Of all the cast members no longer with us, who is your favorite? And was there a particular sketch you fondly remember? Be sure to hit the share button if you enjoyed this video and definitely subscribe to my channel. That way you'll be in the loop whenever I add new material. Thanks again for watching.